Oh, there we go. That... <coughs> and we're recording. So in three, two, one. Hello and a big fat bonjour to you and welcome back to the Call of the Horn podcast. Two horns, one great chat. Hi, I'm Christy Horn and one half of this amazing family podcast. And uh, FYI, a giant hello to stand in cousin Ben, who is standing in for Sarah today because Sarah's had um, uh, her first freedom weekend and is off doing something amazing so welcome to the podcast ben kempstar oh thank you so much for having me you've you've promoted me to co-host already and it's my first (laughs) podcast i'm very happy (laughs) i know ben i know thank you so much for um joining us on the old potteroonie today it's so good to see you and um i have got a script here right in front of me and already i have gone bloody well off script so That's okay. Um, I just thought um, whilst, okay. All right, okay, start again. Um, So today on the podcast, we have got Ben Kempster and Ben joins me today all the way from Adelaide. Hi, Ben, how are you? I am so good. How are you going, Christy? My favourite cousin ever. Oh, thank you. You are so absolutely gorgeous. (laughs) Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Ben. Have you been uh, loving listening to the podcast? Absolutely. And may I say no disrespect to my other cousins, who I also love very, very much. But um, <laughs> now, now I'm feeling really bad about that. So maybe you could edit that one out for me. <laughs> yeah, consider it, it done. Edited. Oh, done. Of course. Of course. Uh, um, I'm, I have been loving the podcast so much. It is, you know, I'm one of, uh, lots of people love podcasts. I don't love listening to lots and lots of podcasts, but this is absolutely hands down my favorite now because I've been I've struggled to find podcasts I can listen to from the start to finish but I love it ah, so much it's just I, brilliant. brilliant oh that is so good and the whole purpose of the podcast was to connect and reconnect family because we're so far apart from each other and although like lots of restrictions and that have just been lifted particularly in Melbourne Australia mm, but know. it's been okay. really hard because we haven't been able to see our family or our friends um so Sarah has just been like taken to this like a duck to water so um although today I don't know where she is she's gone hey wall man <laughs> she's she's taken like a duck to water and just shoot it off to the other side of the <laughs> pond by the sounds of it. She's like, I'm out of here. Podcast, schmodcast. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Talk I'm to the hand. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> First day of freedom. She... First day of freedom. She's she's like... a... No, you go. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> yeah, she's like, First day yeah. of freedom. I'm out of here, man. Screw you and your podcast. I think she actually got a phone call from Mick Malloy or someone like that. She's been asked to actually <laughs> yeah. go into the Triple M studios and do it for real. Oh, God, that'd be right. That'd be right. So every every podcast we, um, you know, we get to know one of our family members. We shine the spotlight on, you know, someone amazing in our extended family. And this episode um, we are going to be chatting, we are chatting with uh, Benjamin Kempster who is my cousin from Adelaide and also Ben today I will be I will be testing out on you you will be uh, numero uno to um, a new segment which is on the call of the horn podcast so I hope you're going to be a bit excited it's called would you rather yes I love a new segment I'm so ready for would you rather that sounds like (laughs) It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> All righty, Ben. So why don't we just, um, you know, fast forward with this chitty chatter and get to know you a little bit better. So Ben, yeah. why don't you tell us who are you and like, how do you fit into this amazing family? All right. So I am uh, Ben Kempster, as you've so lovely introduced, introduced me so nicely. Uh, I am son of Joe Kempster or Lyndon Kempster. I'm actually, of all the four Kempster kids that then went on and had their own kids, I'm the youngest cousin, which is kind of strange. Um, so, yeah, you have to think about oh, that. Did you see my I eyeballs? Am. My eyeballs yeah, were going <laughs> like around then. I was like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, your pupils dilated. You're thinking, whoa, <laughs> I just blew your mind. I know, I'm the... I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> my own sound effects. 
<laughs> you got mm. the spring. That's the spring coming out from behind your eyeballs. Yeah, no, I am the youngest cousin and, and I'm, um, I'm 44, 45 next month. Um, I, I have a wife. I'm married to Sarah. We've been married 15 years just this week. Oh, congrats. Um, congrats yeah, to you two. You. That's awesome. I know. And you were there on that day. You you guys stayed up in the Barossa, didn't you? You had, yeah, you had lots yeah, of people I do. in that really nice house. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, the house. Just, oh, the yeah, house. Yeah. That's right. Actually, I was thinking of um, the caravan. That was Stephen and Adele's. <laughs> yeah, Stephen's wedding caravan. Our place. Our wedding is like you know you got to upgrade. It's a bit more fancy. <laughs> <laughs> the accommodation was good. It was great. Oh God, yeah. Anson, Karen, and Howie and I rented this beautiful house in the Barossa. Man, it was fun. I remember we got absolutely wasted the night before your wedding. Were you there? <laughs> I can't even remember. At the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. You don't remember. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you, yours has had a beautiful winery. Yeah, so we got married in a garden and then the winery was across sort of just a bit <laughs> down, the, down the road at uh, Eulabry Winery, which, which then it was very small. Now it's just recently been sold. So that family have sold it and now someone else has bought it. It's grown a lot wow. since we uh, since we had our little wedding there. Aww. Yeah, so that's, and since then we've had a, a son. So I have a son called Reed. He's seven and he's in year one at school and uh, he's he's just a go-getter. He loves he's a little legend. Lots of sports. Oh, he loves it all sports. He likes remote control cars he likes all sorts of stuff and he likes he loves lego he's mad for lego oh really and uh, totally and we have a dog called turner who we've kind of um we're kind of looking after long on a long long-term loan from sarah's mum and dad so we've got him and we're like uh, we're not giving him back we're keeping him so and he's he's 12 and so he's an old dog he just likes to sleep and be around us so that's that's me and my family Oh, how nice. That's so lovely. I knew all of that, but um, it's so nice to share it with our, our 120 listeners because we, uh, yes, yeah. yes, folks, we have got more listeners than we know what to do with. Um, but that's so nice wow. that you've got Turner. You've taken Turner under your wing and he's a beautiful dog, isn't he? He's really nice. Yeah. So he's a beagle crossed with a uh, Brittany Spaniel. So if you can imagine a beagle, but with really long skinny legs, that's kind of... <laughs> which is hard to imagine, but so he's got the big floppy ears and the long nose and uh, he's not as chubby as beagles get. He's got long legs. and What did, what did you say he's crossed with? A Britney Spears? <laughs> yes, yes. So we just put him in a school uniform most of the time. <laughs> he just dances around. Oh, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> that's it. Oh, my God. Oh, Ben. Oh, that sounds like you've got it all happening at your house. And, um totally. Can, can we just um, tap into something amazing that you did this week? Please. Uh, you did, you- uh, oh, my God, I've already gone to question number three, which is like four paragraphs down the track. So that's, <laughs> I'm that's just fine. so excited. I'm, I'm prepared for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. Get back on script. On script. All right, I'm going to ask you that question <clears throat> in a minute. All right, Ben, as you know, on our podcast, every week we do a fast five, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's a fast that's absolutely. ten. Absolutely. It just, it's, it's it just depends. Good. It's fluid, right? So because mm. there's only um, there's only me and my partner in pod isn't here today, I'm going to give you a fast five, right? Yeah, don't be okay. scared. Don't, do not be scared. Um, I don't want you to hold back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire five questions at you, Ben. Let's okay, just go please. for it. Let's just go for it, all right? Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, here's, sure. Question one. Righto, Ben. What is your super skill? Like what are you really, oh. really good at? Oh, I'm, I don't know that I'm actually really, really good at anything. Um, I can, Ooh, I can that's... cook. I can, I, I can do lots of things, but I'm not super, super duper brilliant at anything. Maybe I don't know. I, I, I can cook. Um, I can, I can do lots of things at once. So I can. Do, <laughs> oh, you I seem can, like a I can Swiss Army skill. <laughs> You're a Swiss Army knife. Is that what you yes. mean? You got lots of things yeah, going yeah. on. Like I could take the bins out and I could also make sure my car is locked and also <laughs> say hi to the neighbour and water the lawn all at once kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, that is a super skill. That's pretty amazing actually because, yeah. you know, some people can only do one thing at a time. But, you know, like don't, no, don't interrupt, blah, blah. But, you know, that's, that's pretty amazing that you can do all those things at once. 
Yeah, but I'm also very forgetful. So because I have a lot going through my mind <laughs> most of the time, I tend to forget things as well, which makes my wife of 15 years, Sarah Kempster, very frustrated sometimes. Oh, I bet <laughs> she's got the fry pan, she's like whack on the back of the head. <laughs> doing, 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 doing. <laughs> That was my sound effect. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, moving right along. Question number two on our very fast five with Ben Kempster. Ben, oh. what is your standard fish and chip order, please? I generally just go for chips and maybe a piece of fish, which I know is very standard, but occasionally I'll get a steak sandwich. But I do like I do like their little salads too, you know what I mean? Like you get a bit of coleslaw and a bit of pasta. And oh, right. Maybe that's just... You know how they have the salad bit to the side? You can get yeah. those salads. But I'm just a hot, I just like the hot chips and maybe, yeah, maybe a um, steak sandwich. Oh, that would be really good. Yeah. That yeah. would be my order. That would be my favourite oh, order. Yeah. I would never, ever think to go to the fish and chip shop and get a steak sandwich. Well, maybe they're different here in Adelaide because steak sangers and hot dogs and, you know, pineapple fritters and dim sims and all that sort of stuff are very standard here. Mm. Um, but then I have barbecue chickens. So if you go to a fish and chip shop here, they do barbecue chooks as well. Maybe that's just yeah. an Adelaide thing. Maybe. A, okay, yeah. so potato cake so, or potato scallop? Well, I'd say potato cake, but I generally don't eat them myself. But I would say potato. The, here they're called potato, potato cakes, yeah. Yeah, potato yeah. Potato scallop is like a, isn't that a thing you catch in the ocean? <laughs> it comes in a shell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think up north in uh, QLD, don't they call them potato mm. scallops? Oh, don't they call them potato scallops in Melbourne? No, nah, like potato cakes. Oh, so potato we're on the same page. Why yeah. are we even having this argument? I know. Okay, segue steamed or fried? Dimmies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to press pause. What do you mean you are? Yeah, no, that was a um, steamed or fried dimmy. Oh, definitely fried. I mean, if you're going to have a dim sim, you might as well just be in for a penny, in for a pound, get it deep fried and just enjoy. This steamed okay. dim sim, what do you think that it means it's healthier or no? If you're going to have a dim sim, just get it deep fried. You're already in up to your neck in, in bad <laughs> stuff. Why don't you just get it deep fried and enjoy yourself? Okay, yep, yeah, true that. <clears throat> no, I don't also, agree. Dim sims, steam dim sims are sticky and I just don't like the way they stick together. You have two stuck together and you pull one, then it grabs the skin of the other one. Then you're just left with this big gaping hole in your other dim sim and all you can see is the stuff and go, is this really what I'm about to eat? This big mashed up pile of stuff? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but I love that. I'm a steamed girl and I love to really? peel the skin off the dim sim. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. I do. I fed him do. Like I'll eat and, the skin first. Oh gross. And That's then disgusting. just be left with like the, the giant like dome of mashed up stuff and you actually still <laughs> okay. yeah. I think it should be a I need to be be doing a fast five to you. I think there's a lot more to learn. Yeah. You. Bloody oath. Mm. All right. Okay, folks, he's taking another drink of water. All right. I need to stop. <laughs> yes. Stop drinking water. Because <laughs> yeah, then you'll need to go to the toilet. And yes. go. All right. We're only up to question number three. About fast five. <laughs> I need to re rename this segment. So um, <laughs> okay, Ben. You're a part time uh, comedian, a stand up comedian. Uh, mm. In brackets, make us laugh. Tell me something funny. Close brackets. Can you tell us about this side hustle, please, Ben? Well, I should be very clear and and say that most of the stand up comedy I do doesn't actually earn me any money. So side hustle, yeah, mm. hobby, yes. I have been paid for my comedy though. I have been paid for some comedy, but um, generally I do it at open mic nights or I do fringe shows. So I like to do little set so generally i'll go along and do maybe a five minute set at a gig that's got say 10 or so comedians and there's a host and the host will mm -hmm. introduce each comedian so you get to do five or ten minutes of your own stuff and i just love it i um i've been doing it for about four years i did a set on tuesday night which was lots of fun i tried some new material i had a oh, joke really yeah i did and i got some laughs and some not laughs i made a joke about 
cauliflower rice. Have you ever had cauliflower rice? Yeah. How, yeah. how awful it is. It smells so horrible. Like it, it just totally pongs. Revolting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's awful. So I just had a joke about how bad cauliflower rice smells. And <laughs> Bring it into the office as leftovers that everyone else has the right to kick you out and make you eat it outside. Yeah, that's um, so true. And then I also had a joke about um, cheese and cabana, that it doesn't matter how far we advance as a as a as people, as civilization, there's always a place for cheese and cabana in society, which I think is a good thing. Oh, I couldn't good agree life. more. Could not agree yeah, more. I, mean, I absolutely love that. I'm just feeling like some dim sims plus cheese and cabana right now. <laughs> I will say that I delivered the joke a lot funnier because when I told it to you just then, you didn't even crack a smile. Well, I, was, no, I was thinking about eating cheese and cabana with Jat, Jat's crackers. Oh, yum. Or with the toothpick. You just sort of you know, yeah, yoink yeah. the whole thing off. Yeah. yeah, and then get the toothpick and get those bits out. It's a, <laughs> oh, Well, Ben, you know that I think you are probably one of the funniest people I know, hands down. Oh, so I'll just love so anything. Um Question number four, you're also an mm. actor, yeah. Ben. So why can, can you tell, um, tell all of our 120 listeners what shows, movies, productions you've starred in and any funny areas in this, uh, any funny memories in this area to share? Well. <laughs> that, that you can think of. No pressure. <laughs> I am thinking of a particularly funny time. So, yes, I am an actor again. This is not really paid work because I do I do lots of little things I do voiceovers as well and I do get paid for my voiceovers which is good so that's actually a bit of a side oh. hustle that I do get oh. paid for um, but I do some acting so I've done some plays and I've done some theatre and I just did Mamma Mia this year at the start of this year I did Mamma Mia which was so much fun and I played the if you know the story of Mamma Mia there's three possible dads for this girl uh, who's the star of the, the show and I was one of the possible dads, but I had to play an Aussie, but not just like me as an Aussie. It was like a yeah, mate, how's it going? Kind of yeah, nah, kind of real ochre Aussie. <clears throat> and my name was Bill. So was I that recorded at all, Ben? Was that recorded uh, at all? No, you're not allowed to record. You're not allowed oh. to record these shows. It's actually illegal. Um, you can get in trouble from copyright stuff. So okay. no, unfortunately not. There's lots of photos, but it was just so much fun. So I got to have a sing and little bit mm. of dancing which I don't love dancing so I was kind of up for that uh, but just a good fun character role so I love that sort of thing um, what about tv done... have you been on tv Ben no I've never done oh I've been an extra in McLeod's Daughters once does that count yeah yeah like Water Rats, Neighbours, Summer Bay <laughs> yeah, no none of those none of those hot locations <laughs> i've been to summer bay in new south wales i've actually been to the beach and have it's really it's well, not that counts country, really. oh it counts, no you know well look, you couldn't go into the, you couldn't go in and see alf you know or anything like that you could oh. just see where they film it so yeah so it's no glenelg fun. it's no glenelg <laughs> is that what you're saying <laughs> no nothing compares to Glen- it's no it's no maslin's no, definitely not. Thank goodness for that. But do you want to know my funny story? You know yeah, this yeah. funny story. I know, I know this funny story. Do you know where I'm going with this already, don't you? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Audition. So this is to our, for our listeners because Christy knows this story because she's actually in it. We, When I was living in Melbourne now, a long, long time ago, we're talking like 25 years ago, if you can believe that. We, yeah, I know, ridiculous. We decided that we might audition for a show. Bo Morris Community Theatre were doing a show. I don't even know what the show was. It must have had some sort of singing in it because we decided to rock up and just audition completely unprepared. We had it nothing. Was... Right? I don't even know how this how this happened, but we just ended up going in and seeing the director and he said, okay, yeah, you need to audition. There's a few scripts there, so just pick one out. So we had to pick out some dialogue from this big pile of paper and then we had to go in and actually just stand on the stage by ourselves <laughs> I'm not going to be able to tell the story <laughs> that was so funny so we had to do that but then we had to sing a little bit of a song and I, ha- I think I was first and I had no <laughs> idea when someone says sing a song or tell a joke you just your mind just goes <laughs> absolutely blank so I think I sang like a really slow kind of sad crowded house song or something. 
then, then, so I've come off and I'm thinking, oh, I don't think I've got the part. <laughs> I don't think I'm in. And then Christy. Crowded House Musical. You, <laughs> yeah, Crowded House the Musical. But then you had to go up and you did your scripty bit. And then <laughs> I think the guy must have asked you, do you know the song Big Spender? Is that right? Yeah. And he asked if you knew the song. And so, yeah. so I, I'm, I, I I'm said yes, my... <laughs> but really no. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew the chorus bit. <laughs> so I was sitting in the uh, the other room and all I can hear is Christy in the, other, <laughs> in the theater go, hey, Big Spender. <laughs> The minute you walk in the joint, bam! I think you might have even done the bar. I did. I think, I think I was stripping at the same time. I don't even know how Ben and I, it was just Ben and I in this big theatre and these two people way down the back end of the theatre like, do you know, hey, big spender? I'm like, yeah. And then he started me off, you know. And then I got to the bit where it said, burna, burna. <laughs> and I was just singing it like that. I had no idea. And he's like, oh, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> and then, oh, my God. I actually walked backstage and Ben, I just remember Ben was just doubled over, <laughs> doubled over laughing. Laughing, and it was like, let's get the hell out of here. We got out, and then I, I fed him, and we laughed and just screamed with laughter, didn't we, Ben? It was one of those. I don't know that I've ever laughed that much before or after. It was just, it was ridiculous. I thought, I don't think, I don't think I could breathe. It was so funny. It was very, very funny. And needless to say, we didn't get the role. And then we saw that guy. Remember, we saw him at the Cardinia Park. We watched the Geelong. But you're like, that's the guy from Bo Morris Theatre. Oh my God! It was like, oh, how could, how could we possibly bump into this person? How embarrassing! Oh God. Anyway. Really, really funny memory. Oh, thanks so much for sharing. Hopefully it came across funny too, but oh, geez, what a cracker. Hey, um, so question number five on our very special Fast Five with Cousin Ben. The game yeah. Consequences, Ben, it runs mm. long mm. and deep in the Kempster slash Horn family. It has yes. decades of traditions. Do you have any funny memories of this game and can you share them with us? Yeah, look, I, I love Consequences. I haven't played Consequences for a long time, but it was always... A highlight if ever you came over to Adelaide from Melbourne or if ever we went over it was always like okay when are we going to start playing consequences so I'm guessing most of our listeners know how consequences work though I reckon you've explained it in one of your previous podcasts um, how it actually works but some of the I was not there for the famous Len Chop moment unfortunately <laughs> um, which I would love to have been but <clears throat> I do I do remember one particularly funny one <laughs> I had to read this one out and Arnie Ashley actually was the one that had to write where the two people meet. So you do, oh, name yeah. the same, you know, where they met and <laughs> Arnie Ashley wrote Werribee Poo Farm. <laughs> which, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so the two people met at, and it literally said Werribee Poo Farm on my face. <laughs> <laughs> And I had no idea that there was actually a, you know, a treatment facility, if you like, at Werribee. I had no idea because obviously I'm from Adelaide. Only little. So I was only little. So yeah. I had to read out, I had to read out Werribee Poo Farm. That was probably, that's the one that sticks in my mind absolutely the most is Werribee Poo Farm. Yeah. I even remember, I even remember where we were. That was at Windsor Gardens. That was a long time ago. That was right. hilarious. But I, I love consequences. And another funny Another funny thing in that it wasn't funny, which made it even funnier, was that we I tried it with another group of people once, <laughs> and and it just didn't work. Like someone someone had to write down where the two people met, and they just wrote their own <laughs> home address. <laughs> it's like me saying they met at Rawlings Road, Modbury North. Oh, okay, fair enough. Is that just, that's just a fact? <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Because it's had it's had a bit of a resurgence in our family and it's become a tradition on Christmas Day and we oh, only wow. play it on Christmas Day. And the kids, Sarah Thomas and Matthew, Mum, Howie, me, Aunts and Karen, it's just, you know, it just, we actually can only play a maximum of three games because it everything just hurts after three games because we're laughing so much. And it's hard to describe if you haven't played it before and if you don't, 
if you're not on the same wave oh it's just the funnest and it's for free and we always yeah. partner up with the same people each time and I'm always with Matthew and um, you partner up oh, that's yeah cool. So just to make it, because the kids were little, you know, growing up and stuff. So, um, and then Howie is always with Thomas. Sarah is always with mum, aunts and Karen are by themselves and always with Matthew. So, yeah. um, and it's just bloody hilarious. The kids just tap right into it. They're really, really smart and clever at it. A lot of yeah. poo, bum, wee, <laughs> boobs, <laughs> you know. <laughs> acne you know there's all sorts of stuff like that but um so it's the next generation of consequences but I have such fond memories um probably the most unbelievable memory was the Len Chop by Anthony Horn and when Uncle Joe went blue because he was choking and he nearly died playing consequences fun fact um and then yeah bit of bit of Mount Mount Compass Strawberry Farms comes to mind (laughs) Oh, yes, of course. Aegon Berry Farm, yeah. <laughs> some, oh, some ice, something about mum and Uncle Joe always used to write about oh. ice creams and gadgy gadgy. Yes, so that was that was the Ted and Marge Forest references because he used to sell <laughs> ice creams and to keep them frozen, he had them on dry ice. So there was always dry ice jokes. There was always the, his car, one of the cars somewhere made that gadgy gadgy sound and they used to go. They used to jump the fence, and because people used to have outdoor toilets, so they would jump the fence. And if they knew their neighbour was on the toilet, they'd like pull the chain from outside the toilet <laughs> window. And they used to, that always used to come in. Ted and Marge Forrest would always make it. A yeah, and uh, in in the new generation of consequences, Moza who teams up with Sarah, she always slips in a bit of Marge and Ted Forrest. No one knows. Yeah, but fun fact: Mum has. Um, you know, been with the aunts, um, aunts Karen's kids since they were little, you know, in lots of different ways. But um, mm. they call Margarine Marge Forest. Oh, do they? <laughs> they do. It's That's just cool. getting Marge Forest out of the fridge. So, yeah, they've adopted that. Super, super funny. Oh, hilarious. Oh, That's my cool. God. Righto, Ben. I've got a sixth question for you. Consequence was the fifth question. So this is a, um, oh. a bonus question. Ben, okay. where should chocolate be stored, in the fridge or in the cupboard? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Can I, can I say that a bit of both and I'll give some, some yeah. rationale yeah. for that? Yeah. So I, I think that dark chocolate in the fridge is not good. So if you have... If you have dark, because we have, we have sometimes get the 70% dark chocolate. If you have that cold, it's really not good. It's just yuck. It doesn't, it just tastes really weird and it loses all its flavor. But I love milk chocolate from the fridge. So if you have like a, you know, like a mint one or just a plain dairy milk one and that's in the fridge and it just has that snap, mm-hmm. I really love, I love cold milk chocolate and I like room temperature dark chocolate. Right, so right, to, yeah. Sorry to give an answer both ways, but no, no, that's, no, that's I need to fine. Mm. It is what a dividing think? question. It really is. Mm. I I mm. like my chocolate at room temperature, and mm, okay. I like um, if it's caramello, which is my favourite. Um, I like it nice and soft. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So all all of my chocolates, I never put in the fridge. Even if you get those big boxes of favourites, and sometimes they're on special for like seven bucks, the really big ones. Um, yeah. yeah, just just. Keep them at keep it at room temperature. I don't think I like cold oh. things on my teeth, and I don't like <clears throat> excuse me, like crunchy things like dim sims fried. No, that's why I think I like the soft dim sim. So, are you saying you don't eat anything that's crunchy? What about potato chips? Yeah, yeah, I do eat those. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I did have to think about that though, didn't I? That yeah, okay. So that that theory kind of there's a few caveats to that. There is, yeah. So I don't really like yeah. crust crunchy bread or bruschetta because it's like too crunchy and hard and yeah no I, I get that and it, it gets the roof of your mouth you know those yeah. can sort of rip the roof of your mouth that's not good no that's right you so could, what well you could have like a you could chart this up foods that i like <laughs> soft and foods that i like hard i'm willing to accept chips as crunchy but not dim sims for example you know but i think that could be oh, that could be maybe... like a guide <laughs> Because this could be a sequel to my book on all the things that give me the shits. 
That's my book yeah. that I hasn't been released yet. And we touched on it in the last episode. And um, actually, you know, I, I probably shouldn't go there right now because, um, you know, once I start talking about the things that really annoy me, I can't stop. Mm. But I think you're onto something there, Ben, and that is a um, a book about <laughs> what foods are like, soft and hard. <laughs> so that would yeah. be, yeah, <laughs> that would be a really fun book for everyone to read. And then you can have a supplement to say foods that I'm willing to eat through a straw. You know, <laughs> just go the next the next uh-huh. level of you know liquid, basically. Maybe I could take that with me as I um, journey through life and as I get into aged care. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so incremental. Know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like custard is a yes, but then, you know, like say, I don't know, something else, chocolate bars are a no. Don't blitz them because I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, but oh, just I would be actually just saying. Just uh, oh, my yeah. God. That was the best. Um, that was the best special Fast Five with Cousin Ben. Thanks so much. Even though there were six questions and it took up like 20 minutes. That's okay. <laughs> Finally, Ben, we have a new segment here on the podcast and it's called Would You Rather? So, oh, um, awesome. we, uh, although Sarah's not with us today, she bloody well loves these would you rathers. And I'm just going to fire them at you one by one and you can, uh, you know, just give me your answers. Okay. Number one, would you rather go without shampoo for the rest of your life or toothpaste for the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would rather go without shampoo because I like brushing my teeth. And I could always just shave my head and use soap. Oh, God, you're so smart. See, I would have gone, um, I would rather, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I think it's a, it's a really good one, but I, I kind of mm. don't care if I don't, I've got bad breath or good breath or clean breath. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good, to, good, good to know next time I see you face to face, I'll yeah. keep my distance. I'll probably have a face mask on. All right, Ben, <laughs> question number two. Would you rather have a pet tiger or a pet lion? Oh, wow. Now, they're both ferocious, so it's going to come down to what, which one I like the look of the best. And I'd have to say tiger because I think they've just got that. Look. Lions can look a bit scraggly, a bit scruffy. But tigers have just got a nice sleek. Look oh to them. yeah, I would have to say tiger. Yeah, kind of regal, aren't they? <laughs> oh, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No. So I would say I'd say tiger, but um, I don't know if that's allowed. I have to check the Tea Tree Gully Council website to see if you're allowed to have tigers as pets. I'm not sure. You're sure. Yeah, pretty, as long as they're tied up in a cage. Probably. And they've got a bit of a run at the side of the house, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and a <laughs> muzzle. Yeah. All right, Ben. Pick up their poo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, would you rather go a year with no <laughs> no eyelashes or go a year with no eyebrows? <laughs> okay. A year with no eyelashes or a year with no eyebrows? I think I'd have to say eyelashes because if you had no eyebrows, you'd just be looking <laughs> kind of really surprised all the time, wouldn't you? You would. Yeah. So. I mean, if you if you got, I mean, you can't ask follow up questions to a would you rather, but if you had no eyebrows, could you draw fake ones on? Easily, yep. Okay. So in that case, no. Look, I think I'll still I'll stick with eyelashes. I think you could get away with that more than you could eyebrows because you <laughs> might you might not get them even, or you know you might <laughs> sort of forget to do it one day, and then you'd just be looking really. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'd I'd, I'd rather have. Um, I'd rather keep my eyelashes because eyebrows, yeah, you can just draw on thicker, thinner, you know, curly bits on the ends, diamonds, <laughs> lightning bolts, whatever. It doesn't matter. And if, and if you're having a bad day, just draw them really frowning. You know, people will, people will just leave you alone, hopefully. Yeah. Too. All right, next question. Would you rather have a hook for a hand or a peg for a leg? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This is a, this this could come up one day, so it's good that I'm actually thinking about it now because I'm giving it some forethought. Hook for a hand or a peg for a leg? That is mm-hmm. such a tough question. I think mm-hmm. I think I'll go peg for a <laughs> peg for a leg, <laughs> and I'll I'll do that because I like to cook and I like to play piano, and I also have a job where I need to do lots of 
you know, typing them. Yeah, so that could be having, hard if you've you know, got a hook. It, it could be. And if you have a peg for a leg, like literally just like a pirate style peg, yeah. you could still still get around and you could still maybe kick a ball and drive a car. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I have to go peg for that. But I need to write that down. <laughs> if ever it should happen, at yeah. least I've given it some thought. That's right. Yeah, good, good answer there. All right, here's our last would you rather. <laughs> okay. This is, I reckon this is the best. All right, keep it together, Christy. Right, ready. Would you rather grow a ponytail down to your ankles or have a, <laughs> or have a huge Adam's apple? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a tricky, cho- a tricky choice, not one that I've ever thought about before. Did you and Sarah come up with these? <laughs> The huge Adam's apple. <laughs> that is like, so funny. Oh, Jesus. An Adam's apple, literally the size of an actual <laughs> apple. <laughs> How deep would your voice be? Like, good idea, how's it go? <laughs> Sorry, I just got this really big Adam's apple. I don't know what to know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hilarious. Or a ponytail think... down to your ankles. It could be tripping hazard. Oh. It could be. <laughs> And it would probably get really long and scraggly by the bottom, and you'd have to, you know, how men get the really long ponytail, and sort of every sort of sort of few centimeters they put another tie. You know what I mean? It kind of looks like they hold it holds it together nicely. I'd probably have to do that kind of Willie Nelson style, just plait it oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it would like be hard to wash, and you know, it oh, would yeah. stink. <laughs> Especially if you'd chosen not to have shampoo for the rest of your life, just so you can brush your teeth. <laughs> It could make it really tricky. Imagine an Adam's <laughs> apple, you know. You'd have to wear a scarf all of the time to kind of cover it up. Well, you'd have to get like, you'd have to wear V-necks a lot because you couldn't actually, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't oh. get just a round neck over it. It would become quite painful, you know. And shaving would really, because you have to be very careful shaving around your Adam's apple. You have to so you don't it. nick yourself. <laughs> you'd have to wax your neck. <laughs> Or use like the Veep, you know, the hair removal cream. Just like, Nads. Oh, around your Adam's apple. Nads, yeah. <laughs> Get some Nads around your Adam's apple. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> so. then if somebody, if you met somebody for the first time, they wouldn't be looking at you. They'd just be looking at your Adam's apple Go, what's going on there? It's massive. <laughs> well, they couldn't, they'd have to pretend they weren't really. You'd be like, are, you look, are, you look, are you looking at my Adam's apple? No, 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 just not, no. And then when you talk, it wobbles up and down, right? It does. So, it does, yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to grow your beard really long over your Adam's apple, but then maybe the Adam's mm. apple would poke through the beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And that would not, you don't want that, no, I think. So hence hence why I would go for the ponytail. I think the, the Adam's apple could be very problematic. <laughs> A lot of issues there with Adam Zappel. Oh, God. That was our uh, Would You Rather segment. How funny was that? That was just absolutely brilliant. Excellent. Oh, ben, we're coming to the end of our um, podcast with you today. I want to oh, say thank you so much for being a part of the um, family um, podcast. And I hope oh, you've God. really enjoyed being um, being on it and taking the time to chat so um do you have any final comments or any final suggestions or did you enjoy you know getting tapped on the shoulder for the um the call of the horn i absolutely loved it i hope that it comes across okay to all your listeners um because the other podcasts have been great to listen to so i hope people find this just as enjoyable i've loved it it's been really really good and it's gone so quickly and you are just you're the you're the consummate professional look you've got the john laws microphone it's all just Thank you very much. No. Yes. And and I have to say that, you know, a lot of people say this on the Kempster Horn chat, but thank you so much because you do keep the family together in a lot of ways. And this is one another way that you do it. And, you know, not, not every family has someone like that in their family. So we're very, very lucky to have someone like you in our family that Aww, helps to keep thank connections you. going. And you're doing it at work with your professionals podcast as well. You're doing it there, the same thing about reconnecting and I just think I think you're pretty amazing. So thank yeah, you so much for inviting super. me and having me. Oh, so. thank you for those beautiful kind words. It's super fun. I'm absolutely loving um, 
producing the podcast and it's just kind of snowballing. So thank you, Ben. And um, as we sign off on this latest episode of the Call of the Horn podcast, um, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. See you later. See ya. And three, two, one. Hello and a big fat bonjour to you and welcome back to the Call of the Horn podcast. Two horns, one great chat. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Christy Horn and one half of this amazing family podcast and a giant hello to everyone listening into the Call of the Horn. We hope you're all keeping well and enjoying a bit more freedom. Okay, you know the drill. Before we go any further, peeps, please let me, please allow me to introduce Back to the mic. Hang on a minute. She's not here this week. My top deck, my top deck to the club sandwich, my partner in pod, she's away this week. So in her seat this week is the amazing cousin Ben all the way from Adelaide. Let's welcome Ben to the mic. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Hello, Christy. Hello. Thank you for promoting me so quickly to co-host. I'm pretty sure that's what you said anyway. I am honoured to be here. Sorry that we can't have Sarah with us, but this is just going to be so much fun. I've been really, really looking forward to it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to miss Sarah this week, but don't worry, people. She's back next week. <laughs> and end. All right. And cool. three, two, one. Great work, Ben. This was so much fun, and I knew this was going to be an excellent pod. Did you have fun too? I had so much fun. It was great. It went so quickly. It was just like having a chat. It was really good. And you are super professional. You've got it completely covered. So I knew I was in safe hands. It was amazing. Thank you so Aww. much for having me. Thank you. And it's official. Next pod is with cousin Leanne from Adelaide. So you've been officially tapped on the shoulder, Lee, and we'll be touching base with you in the next couple of weeks. So until next time, everyone, see you later. Thanks so much for listening. Take it easy and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.